Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Wine Dance Community Nazarene Church Sunday Morning Experience, where our pastor is the Reverend David L. Solomon. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We feel blessed that you're joining Community Nazarene Church this morning, either here in the sanctuary or virtually, and pray this morning's service is a blessing to you. If you can, please stand for prayer. Lord God, we stand before you this morning thanking you for another day, another opportunity to praise and magnify your holy name, Lord Jesus. We praise you, we magnify you. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord Jesus, in our right mind, wanting to serve you, Lord Jesus. Give our full attention to you, Lord Jesus. Stop whatever it is that we had to deal with last week, Lord Jesus. Not let us look forward to what we're dealing with next week, Lord Jesus, but to stay right here in your presence, Lord God, to hear your word, Lord Jesus. This is our fuel. This is our energy. This is what gets us through the week, Lord Jesus, and we are so grateful for you, Lord God, that you've decided to come into our presence, Lord Jesus. We will not take that for granted, Lord Jesus. Add a special blessing, Lord Jesus, to the man bringing the word today. Let his words flow through you, Lord Jesus. Let it come out so that we understand clearly what you want us to hear and what you need for us to do, Lord Jesus. Lord God, there is just so much going on in this world, Lord Jesus, and we just need peace, Lord Jesus. Give us that mindset, Lord Jesus, that peace, Lord Jesus, manifested in our hearts so that when they see it in us, it spews forth across the world, Lord. These blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, on my lips, whatever you want to say. Amen. We thank the Lord for his goodness. We thank the Lord for his mercy and his love for us. And we will bless him. We will honor him. We will magnify him. We will glorify his name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
God is good all the time, and all the time our God is so good. Amen. 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 We know that he reigns forever and forever and forever. Amen. And let's remember that as we go through our weeks and the months ahead with all that's happening. Remember that he is still on the throne, that he still reigns, and that he is still in control. Amen. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And it's good to see you all today. Amen. And we thank the Lord for His continual blessings upon us as we continue to worship Him, as we continue to give Him the praise, honor, and glory. He deserves all of it. Amen. Amen. If we don't praise Him, the rocks are going to cry out. So He rightfully deserves our praise. Amen. Amidst of all that is happening uh, across the world, uh, in our communities, uh, all of what's going on, He is still worthy of the praise. Amen. As we go to prayer this morning, we want to remember to pray for uh, Sister Margaret Bird. We thank God she is with us today. And But before I continue, let me just prepare Brother uh, Rodney to come and lead us in prayer, if you don't mind, in a moment. And uh, amen, if you can set him up in the back. Thank you so much, Sister Vera Brown, Brother Capers. Um, Brother Rodney is going to be leading us in prayer. Amen. And so, excuse me. Sister Capers, um, let's remember to keep her in prayers as well. Sister Estelle Carter, uh, Evangelist Day. Let's do, we remember to keep Evangelist Day in prayer. She has not been feeling well. Um, let's continue to pray for April Day. That's Evangelist Day's daughter. Let's keep her, uh, I'm sorry, sister, excuse me. The Dublin family, especially Ellen Dublin. Uh, Brother Gay, senior, pray for him. Sister Irene Holloway, Sister Betty Malcolm. Sister Martha Marshall, Reverend Walter Skeet, and uh, Walter Tui is doing better, coming along. He was discharged from the hospital. Let us continue to pray for his recovery. Let's pray for the situation in Gaza and um, that entire region. Um, let's pray for, for their, the peace, that God will bring peace amongst the people there. Uh, in the Middle East, and um, that God would fix some of the situations that has been around for uh, centuries. And so let us remember to pray for that whole area, the Middle East, that God will bring peace. Thousands or hundreds uh, have lost their lives. Pray for those families that have lost loved ones, both sides of the coin, both sides of the situation. Pray for our country as we are faced to make decisions, our country, our leaders. Pray that God would grant them wisdom and direction. Pray for one another. Certainly we all, our faces differ, our needs differ, but we know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's keep him in our, keep each other in our prayers today. We pray for the church as we go through, um, as we move into a new season, pray for this ministry that God will bless in ways that he has never blessed before. Pray for me, that God will give me the strength um, that would continue to heal my body. Again, thank you so much for your prayers, and uh, we're going to stand at this time, and let's ask Brother Rodney to lead us in prayer at this time. Please join with us as we pray together. God, we come to you once again on bended knees. We give you the highest praise because you deserve it as you are the highest of God that we know. We ask you to bless those families which names were called. Touch them with your finger of love, with your mighty, mighty healing power, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for me, Lord. Pray for me as I struggle to get higher and closer to you. And I pray for everyone that's standing here under the sound of my voice and those out on the internet in the virtual world. Because we all need your prayers today, so Lord. Lord, we need your prayer. This world is going down the wrong path in some places on this earth. But there are some others who are lifting you up. And we will continue to lift you up because you are the great I am. Lord, have mercy on us. Pray for our family here in the Community Nazarene Church as we also try to keep hold up the bandstand banner. And we keep pushing to the mark where we will find joy 
one day in the morning we are going to find joy and we will see all our loved ones again. Thank you, Lord. We give you the highest praise and all your blessings. In your son Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Well, let me again welcome, 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 welcome home. Welcome you home. It's good to be home, isn't it? Amen. Um, and may I say, welcome community Nazarene Church Nation. Amen. For those who are watching us online, we thank you. Um, we realize that um, our online uh, reach is wide. Amen. Wide and deep. And so we thank you so much for watching us online. Let me encourage you, if you're watching online and you have been blessed uh, by our services, your experience, that you support this church. Amen. That you give. Amen. And uh, I trust that you would respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit as He continues to prick our hearts about giving. I trust that you would, you would uh, respond to Him and uh, there are ways to give. I know I'm a little bit early in this, but that's okay. There are ways to give. Uh, please visit our website at communitynazarenechurch.org. And uh, we ask you to please continue to support this, this, this ministry. Amen. So we are so happy you're here today in person and those again watching online. Philippians th uh, 1 verses 3 through 6 reads like this. Every time I think of you. I give thanks to God for you. Whenever I pray, I, I make my request for all of you with joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. Amen. So I pray for you every day. And every time I think of you, I remember you in my prayers wherever I am. I always remember and think of you. Amen. And so today we are so, so glad that you are with us, and we thank God again for, your, for his presence with us in this place. Amen. We're excited about uh, what's coming up the next uh, few weeks. Amen. We know that Clubhouse begins. I will resume next Saturday, the following Saturday, sorry. There'll be no Clubhouse this Saturday. Those who normally typically send your kids to Clubhouse, uh, we will not have Clubhouse this Saturday. And um, we are planning a celebration party on Sunday, April 19th. I'm sorry, November 19th. Wow. There's something happening in April that I'm not aware of. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hmm. Uh, did I let the cat out the bag? Someone says, <laughs> no, no. but November 19th, November 19th. Actually, April 19th um, is uh, our wedding anniversary. That's what it is. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> That's what it is. April 19th, 1975. Do the math. Do the math. None of you guys weren't born. Uh, yeah, the rest of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time, 48 years. So if you think uh, I've forgotten, I haven't forgotten. And, uh, and I guess the Lord kind of pricked it a moment ago to remind me. Don't forget, April 19th, but it's November 19th of this year. We're having a celebration Sunday. It's called Welcome Home, Welcome Back Home Sunday. We're going to uh, celebrate um, that Sunday. We're going to have a party. We're going to have some stuff after service, some finger foods after service. And we want you to start to invite your friends, invite your neighbors. Sunday, April, uh, November 19th. Sunday, November 19th. Sunday, November 19th. Amen. Celebration Sunday. Amen. Be with us. Come that Sunday. Uh, and uh, Henderson Taylor said he's going to bring a couple people with him. And so we challenge all of us to bring two extra people with us. Amen. 
on, on November 19th. Amen, amen, amen. And we look forward to the Christmas season, which is just a few weeks away now. And uh, as we begin to plan for the holiday season, pray that God will give us guidance and direction as we continue to plan forward. Amen, amen. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17 um, reads like this. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves. In other words, put on this new wardrobe as God's chosen people. A new wardrobe that God has picked out for us with compassion. The wardrobe has compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And then bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, be quick to forgive an offense. Be quick to forgive an offense. Don't let it linger. In other words, don't let it last overnight or into weeks be quick, in other words, to forgive an offense, and forgive as the Lord forgave you. Amen. That's tough. <laughs> That's a challenge for us as Christians, as believers, to quickly forgive someone who has stepped all over our toes and who may have hurt us so deeply. Paul reminds the Colossian believers and he reminds us today, be quick to forgive. And verse 14 reads, and over all these virtues, over the virtue of compassion, kindness, and humility, gentleness, and patience over all these virtues that you have put on love. In other words, he's saying here, wear love. Put it on. Intentionally wear love. Just like we intentionally get up every morning and we, we we, we, we brush our teeth and we, we are prepared to leave for the day or to do our chores for the day. Intentionally put on love. Wear love. Amen. Which binds them all together in perfect unity. Which binds the compassion and the, the, the kindness and the humility and the gentleness and patience. Love binds it all together. Amen. Brings it together and holds it together. So Paul is saying we must intentionally wear love. Deliberately wear it. As hard as it might be to love people who may not think like you or look like you or talk like you or go the places where you go. Yet he is saying as a chosen people. A people that represent Jesus Christ as ambassadors of Christ. Put on love. Wear it. Amen. Let the, verse 15, let the peace of Christ, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. In other words, let, let, the, peace of, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other. Amen. It speaks of unity. Unity. Let the peace that, that, that Christ brings to us keeps us in unity. Amen. Let it rule in your heart. Since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Amen. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in 
your hearts. Amen. As I was studying this uh, portion of Scripture in preparation for my message today, and I haven't given you the theme yet, um, but, but I thought about this particular verse. I, I remember, I had a flashback how they, um, the seniors uh, used to sing the old songs, amen, like blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste, glory divine, amen. How they sang the song, it is well, it is well with my soul, amen. What a testimony the seniors have left for all of us. The song that they sang when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus, we will have the victory. Oh, those songs, how firm a foundation speaks of God, the church, His church, a firm foundation. Amen. And so, and so I, I thought about it, and they were singing to God with gratitude in their hearts, and we must do the same thing, amen. As we gather for in-person worship, as we gather online or at home or wherever you go, continue to sing, continue to sing the songs from the Lord, amen, amen. And whatever you do, verse 17 says, whatever you do, whether, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God, the Father, through Him. Amen. So whatever you do, there's no, ex no exception, no exemption. Whatever you do, do it in His name and do it well. Amen. Do it well. Don't hold back. Don't go halfway. Just do it well. Amen. So my message today is entitled, Mistakes into Miracles. Mistake, mistakes, plural, into miracles, plural. Amen. We all make mistakes, don't we? Sometimes we don't like to admit, to admit it, but we've made mistakes. I have made mistakes. And as long as I'm breathing, I'll continue to make mistakes. Amen. Amen. Well, there maybe I may sing a wrong note. <laughs> I may play a wrong tune. I may say the wrong thing. I may act the wrong way. We all make mistakes. Amen. It's hard to say, I know. I'm wrong. It's hard. It's easier to point the finger to other people, isn't it? It's tough to say, I'm wrong. <laughs> really, really tough. You see, you see, we quickly come to the conclusion that it's the other person and not me. It happens to the best of us. Doesn't it? Yeah. It's easily, very easily, to point fingers to other people. So, don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> as long as you are living and breathing, mistakes will happen. Don't they? Amen. A person who never made a mistake, never tried anything new. Amen, Pastor. True. So true. A person who never, let me say it again, who never made a mistake, never tried anything new. Only those who do nothing can say they never made a mistake. 
those who do nothing. We make mistakes. Amen. We make mistakes. We learn from mistakes or failures, not from our successes. Let me say that again. We learn from our mistakes or failures, not from our successes. Mahatma Gandhi said, freedom is not worth having if it does not include the freedom to make mistakes. If no one has said it to you before, let me say it to you today. It's okay to make a mistake. You have the freedom to make a mistake. Don't beat yourself up. Don't destroy yourself. Go easy on you. Amen? Freedom is not worth having if it does not include the freedom to make mistakes. So what is a mistake, Pastor? What is a mistake, Pastor? Well, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, the definition of a mistake is a wrong action or statement proceeding from faulty judgment or inadequate knowledge. If you're writing this down, let me say it again. A wrong action or statement proceeding from faulty judgment or inadequate knowledge. We all make mistakes. Welcome to the club of mistakes. <laughs> Welcome to the family. We make them. Some mistakes are fixable and some just aren't. I don't know if you want to define your mistakes as uh, huge or little or mid-size or big. That's up to you. Nevertheless, it's a mistake and we all make them. But I'm encouraged, I'm encouraged today that there is a way to handle my mistakes. Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 and 19 reminds us, forget the former things. They're in the past. Don't dwell on the past. So often we, that's where we dwell, don't we? And it seems as though we, 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 we attract or we, there is a strong magnet by those around us. So we seem to, to drag those people in that, think, that are thinking along those lines as well. Those who will dwell on the former things. Those who will dwell... on the past. I was having a conversation recently about the past. We were talking about some of the young people in this church from way back, at least when I first got here. And the many people that have come, walked through these doors we talked about how it was on a Friday evening, NYPS or NYI, when the youth would gather on a Friday night. We were talking about and we were reminiscing about how, how we would travel out to the wine dance church every July, the second Sunday of July, for the prayer band no, for the missionary service. And then we said, in October, we came back to this church for the prayer band service. The reminiscent how the, how the wine dance church family would prepare these awesome meals, you know, and I think the church family 
This was before I even became a pastor. I would come with the Beulah Church family to be part of the service. And we were talking about it. Those were the good old days, someone said. And they were. Some really, really wonderful days. But you know what? We can't dwell on the past. We're not going to go back to those days. Amen. Although they were good days, wonderful fellowship. Oh, my. I can, I can talk all day about them, those days. My experiences that I will never, never forget. But we can't dwell on those days. I was just the other day, uh, um, my daughter was reminding me of, uh, um, I forget her name. She played the piano. Sister Pleasant, right. Sister Pleasant. She played the piano. And I thought about those days when Sister Tate, Sister Lucas, and, and many others were part of that gospel choir. Those were some great times. And those who were here then, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And, and those who are new, well, learn a little bit of the history. Those were some great times. Wonderful times. Oh, my. Times when I chuckled as well. I smiled <laughs> deep inside. <laughs> and then I jumped in my car and I said, what was that? <laughs> but those were some good times, Brother Henderson. Good, good, good times. But again... We just can't dwell on those times. So Paul reminds us, reminds us, and we are encouraged by it. Regardless of what mistakes you have made, don't dwell on them. Don't get stuck, in other words, on those former things. They were good, acknowledge they were good, they were wonderful, embrace them, but it's time that we develop some new things. Amen. Some new things. So he reminds us, do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Even coming out of the pandemic, God is still doing a new thing. Even though we may have lost some of our dear friends and Members and people that we honor and regard and love them dearly. We have lost them. And today as I stand here before you, we miss them. But yet God is doing a new thing. I can't, I, I don't get it sometimes. I just don't get it. And I've said often to myself, why? Why? Why, God, did you take away from us? Uh, and I, I've gone down the list many times. Why? And probably, I probably shouldn't because it, it, it just it creates a whole level of thinking. Mind, my mind just, just goes back to those times. And, Despite all of that, God is still doing a new thing. And the scripture says, can't you see it? Often we are blinded by the past. Often we are, we, we are, our, our prism uh, is, is, is uh, we're skewed by what we used to do or who we used to hang out with. God is saying, I have something new for you. I have some better days for you, better days ahead. I am making a way. Even though it seems dry, even though your mistakes may have been huge or maybe this small, I am still making a way for you. 
It may be barren. You may be thinking, well, because of my mistakes, I can't get back up and, and walk again. I can't get back up and run again. He is saying, hey, listen, I am making a new way for you. I believe that God has something new for me and you. And he wants us to look to see what he is doing. Again, often we are blinded by our mistakes. And the enemy keeps us blinded. He keeps us afraid. We worry. He keeps us, he wants us to lose sleep. He wants to disrupt our night rest. That's his intention. But the prophet Isaiah is reminding us, forget about those former things. In other words, release them. Let those former things go. Good, not so good, or indifferent. Let those former things go. Amen? Amen. You see, we can turn our mistakes into miracles. May I say to you today that God has sent us, sent to you and I, an angel ahead of us. He doesn't send us alone as we walk into an unknown future. Regardless of all of our mistakes, we're not alone. God is not going to allow you to walk into an unknown future alone. I mean, no, sometimes we are, we, you know, we, we are afraid of the future because it's unknown. We don't know what's going to happen, especially what's going on now in our world. And all that's happening in our world at this time, as we are here today, we don't know what the next day holds. But let me rest assured, let me encourage you today, that you will not go into the future alone. Amen. God is with you. Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. So you're not alone. You're not alone. You see, when we are moving forward with him, it makes us stronger. Amen. It's time for us to quit wallowing in what's over and done and to look ahead to what you can do for him in the future. Got it? In other words, quit wallowing in the past, the mistakes, all that you didn't do right and all that we didn't say right or act right. Begin to move ahead. Got it? Amen. Amen. Philippians 3, 14 reminds us of verses 13 and 14. Forget in the past and, and looking forward to what lies ahead. There are some great things that are lying ahead for us. Would there be some challenges ahead? Absolutely. Would there be some hiccups ahead or speed bumps ahead, some, some, some challenging moments, some challenging times for us? Absolutely, there will be. But yet, Paul reminds us, and he reminds, as he reminded the, the Philippian believers, uh, look forward. Look forward. Personally, I look forward to what's ahead for this awesome church. It's a great church. As we turn the chapter into 2024, I look forward 
to what God is going to give us in 2024. How God is going to move among us. I look forward to, 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 to God and to the Holy Spirit opening up our hearts and, and to an awesome revival that will break out in this church, God's church. I look forward to those things. So he reminds us, I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God is calling us up to heaven because of what Christ Jesus did for us. So we look forward. Regardless of the mistakes, we have encountered, regardless of the mistakes you and I have done, we look forward to what God is going to do for us in the coming years until Jesus returns, whenever that will be. We do know he's coming back. We don't know when. The Bible reminds us that he is going to come as a thief in the night. Yes, there are signs and there have been signs for many, many years. So we still don't know when he's coming back. So we must continue to strain, to push ahead. Amen. To reach the end of our race. Amen. So that when Jesus sees us. And when we see him. We'll say. He will say. Welcome. Good to see you Solomon. <laughs> really, really good to see you. I look forward to that day when I will see Jesus for myself. Song that we sang many years ago, soon and very soon, we're going to see the King, the late Andre Crouch. Soon and very soon. We don't know when. We don't know when, so don't let your mistakes hold you back from having a relationship with Jesus. Don't let your mistakes keep you from, from really connecting with Jesus. Don't let your mistakes stop you from drawing closer to Him. Don't let your mistakes cause you to look at one another with your eyes crossed. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you see, and we all know this very well, if I can't get along with the people who I see, and yet I'm going to try to get along with Jesus who I haven't seen, got to be able to forgive you as Christ has forgiven me. And I've got to be, you've got to be able to forgive me as Christ has forgiven you. It goes both ways. So let us keep stretching forward with all of the flaws that we come with, with all of our issues that we come with. Remember, that there is an answer and that there is a miracle regardless of all of our mistakes. God has a miracle for us. Will you stand with me, please? Father, there is so much happening around us.
challenges that this life brings to us every, every day. Sometimes we don't know whether to turn to the right or to the left. We don't know who to talk to. We have been beat up in so many ways and stepped on in so many ways. We just don't know where to go and who to turn to. But today, 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 we know that Jesus is the way maker. That Jesus is our promise keeper. He is the one that we can look to, we can turn to, even in the most difficult times. I ask you right now, Jesus, for many may say in their toolbox there are so many mistakes they have encountered. Or they've had, and they are struggling to dump the mistakes on you. Lord, I ask you, even right now, oh God, you have promised that you will bear our, our burdens. As your scripture reminds us, cast all of your cares upon me because he cares for me. And so today, I know in the name of Jesus that you care for every one of us such a time as this in these difficult moments or difficult times I'm glad that Jesus is still forgiving us he is still with us so father as we respectfully bow our heads and our hearts we pray in the name of Jesus as the old song says, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. May we surrender all to you today. Surrender my past. Surrender my now. Surrender my future. And so today, Jesus, we surrender. We turn it all over to you. You're able, you're bigger than we are, than any situation that we have encountered. Your love, your unconditional love for us is wider and deeper than any human love. And so we thank you today. So we surrender all to you. We just give it all over to you, Jesus. And we say to you, you have your way. You have your way. And Jesus, once we have, you have your way with us, we can say we will not trip over the past. Why? Because Jesus, we have surrendered all to you. We thank you, Jesus. I surrender all. We surrender all. Thank you, Jesus. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remain standing, please. Those who are watching this online, we want you. We would like for you to take the next steps. If you're struggling through surrendering all, we are willing to help you to take those next steps. If you're struggling through the mistakes you have made, and you're thinking, well, there's no hope, 
hope is all gone. I've made so many mistakes. It's, it's, it's over. We would love to have a conversation with you. We would love to help you to take the next steps. Help you to begin your next steps forward where you can experience a miracle regardless of your mistakes. Please communicate with us at Visit our website at www.communitynaschurch.org and there is a drop-down menu there. Click on that menu that says Next Steps. You and I know this is not just a broadcast. We want to connect with you. We're about bringing people to Jesus. Would you invite us to be part of your next steps. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May His face shine upon you. As our worship team comes, and they're going to lead us in a song of celebration. Amen. We also want you to prepare to receive God's tithes and offerings. Amen. And as they are singing, I'm going to ask you to come as they are leading us in the song of praise and thanksgiving. Amen. And again, those who are watching online, feel free to, to visit our website. And there is a drop-down menu that says Give, and you can follow the instructions there on giving. Um, there are two or three ways you can do so. And so we thank you. We thank you. May the Lord bless you. We bless what you're about to receive, O oh God. We give you thanks. We give you praise for it. Bless your people. Continue to open doors for your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. As they sing, please give. God bless you. Amen, amen. He deserves it today. All the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen.
deserves it all today. Amen. We thank and praise our Lord for his goodness, his love, his mercy towards us each and every day. We thank the Lord for what we heard today, how we can apply it to our lives as we go forth for this week. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful day that you have given us. We thank you for an opportunity to just raise our hands, to sing songs, to listen to your word. Help us to apply it to our lives as we go forth in this week, knowing not what the difficulties may be, but knowing that you are in control and that we can depend on you and that you are faithful to deliver us from all things. And we thank you, Lord, in advance for what you are going to do in our lives, what you continue to do each and every day in our lives. So as we go forth, let us go forth in happiness and joy and knowing that you are with us. And in spite of all the news and all the things that are going to happen during this week, you are with us, Lord. We can depend on you. You are going to lead us and guide us through whatever happens. And we just celebrate and we stand firm in that today. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. And the church says, amen, amen, amen. You are dismissed, amen.